people either love or hate this game. I've had people say that this is easily the worst game in this series, that it's boring and not scary at all. Well, on the other hand, I've heard the complete opposite from people telling me that this is the best game in the entire series, with some of the most engaging gameplay and best experiences that Final Fantasy Freddy's has to offer. Well, in this video, I'm going to look at this game and put together my thoughts on whether I think that this game is underrated or overrated. Let's begin. For starters, let's highlight the parts of the game that we will be focusing on, the gameplay itself. A quick explanation for those who haven't played it or need a refresher. Final Fantasy III has you manning the security guard position at Fazbear Frights, a horror attraction based off the horrid events of Five Nights at Freddy's. In this position, you have to defend yourself against Springtrap, a monstrous animatronic foe who roams the halls and works his way to your office to kill you. You have no doors to defend yourself, so you have to play an audio lure which you can use to lure Springtrap to a different room like a good little puppy. However, there are a few things that you need to watch out for. Springtrap can enter vents and speedrun to you for a quick kill, but you can seal the vents to prevent him from getting to you. However, you can only seal one vent at a time. On top of that, you have a number of phantom animatronics who will try to jump scare you and cause you to freak out and forget how to breathe. Otherwise, it's the same as the other game. Survive until 6am for 5 nights and you're golden. Now onto the question of if the gameplay is enjoyable. Well, to answer that, let's look at the other games first. The first four Final Fantasy Freddy's games all have what we call a gameplay loop, meaning that for the entirety of the game, we are basically doing the same actions the entire time. In Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, we have to watch the camera and check the lights, as well as shut the doors while managing power. In Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, we have to wind the music box, flash the hall, and put on the mask to prevent being munched. And in Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, we have to run around like a maniac listening for the animatronics in need of an asthma puffer and shut the door when we hear it. Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 probably has the most complicated gameplay loop and I don't mean that in the way that you think. Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 gameplay loop is probably the most varied and has the most altered loop. This is because the game utilizes RNG the most, and to explain what I mean by this, once again, let's look at the other games. All the previous games use an RNG system for their character, in the use of an AI generator system. Most of the animatronics will have a chance to move on a movement opportunity, depending on their AI level. Springtrap is very similar to this, however Springtrap's AI is the most complicated, and there are ways to make him move faster, and sometimes Springtrap doesn't care about his AI value at all and just moves anyway. Obviously, being that in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3, Springtrap is the only threat that you have to deal with, it makes sense that he acts like this, and it entirely depends on your playthrough. If Springtrap decides to listen like a good boy and not go into any events, then it's just audio lure until you need to fix it, but most people who have played Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 will tell you that Springtrap normally decides to do his own thing, and as a result, the player either has to adapt to the situation or die trying. The RNG in this game can be seen as both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, the RNG prevents predictability, which in turn makes the game more scary, which for a horror game, is good. However, on the other hand, if Springtrap consistently one-shots you, it's understand that the player can become frustrated. However, normally Springtrap does what you want him to do, and it can make the gameplay a bit too easy at times. If I'm being completely honest, I can see what people mean when they say that this game is too easy and boring, because on some playthroughs you literally just have to guard the puppy and that's it. However, I feel like that has something to do with the game design. I feel like the RNG that Springtrap has makes it that for earlier nights, he is very rarely a threat. However, that can all be thrown out of the water if you encounter a phantom. Now, each of the phantoms act a little differently, but for most of them, after they jump scare you, they cause a ventilation error, which causes Springtrap to haul himself towards you as fast as possible. The phantoms provide a ton of variety with the gameplay, as being attacked by a phantom causes immediate panic and requires you to react immediately. However, the downside is that the game overloads you with jump scares, which makes them overall completely ineffective and therefore making the game overall not as scary. This isn't great considering how this is meant to be a horror game. However, the phantoms do improve the gameplay overall and in my mind are essential in making up for the downsides of Final Fantasy III gameplay loop, that being the slow gameplay. While these only really come up on later nights, I overall think that Final Fantasy III gameplay is underrated. It's the only game that forces you to use the entire camera system rather than just staying on one camera, and the game forces you to leave the camera system, which is for a horror game, is absolutely essential. Granted, I can understand that this game is not for everyone, but personally, I enjoy this gameplay loop. The Battle of Tug of War with Springtrap is actually quite a unique and engaging experience, and I feel that this game works super well. And when you add in Final Fantasy III's ambience, which is probably one of the better ambiences in the series, this all comes together super well. Now besides the gameplay, what else does Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 have to offer, if anything? Well, besides the amazing ambience, this game introduced one of the most important characters in the entire Final Fantasy Freddy's series, 
Springtrap. Whether you dislike this game or love it, you cannot deny the impact that Springtrap has had on the entire Final Fantasy franchise, and even horror games as a whole. His design is haunting, and the story told with him throughout the games is extremely well executed, and is one of the few times we have actually seen a twist in a Final Fantasy fan game. Well, until Ruin, but we don't talk about Ruin. That being that Springtrap is the purple guy who killed all the kids. And Springtrap's design is super poetic, with him being trapped in the same suit that he used to kill the kids in. While this wasn't explicitly explained in Final Fantasy III, the impact can be felt throughout the entire series. Now Final Fantasy III, in my mind, has one more element that I think makes this not only one of the more underrated Final Fantasy III's games, but one of my personal favourites. And what could that element be? Well, Final Fantasy III has one of the most amazing endings of any Final Fantasy III's game. The good ending in Final Fantasy III is honestly one of the most heartbreaking and beautiful endings in any horror game. Now if I'm being honest, this is the only Final Fantasy Freddy's ending that can bring a tear to my heart. The journey to get the good ending also helps with this as well, having you complete a series of tasks in order to free each one of the kids' souls and put them to peace. And with the addition of the Happiest Day minigame, this ending is just peak. Final Fantasy VI's connection terminated ending is widely agreed to be the main ending to the series and one of the best, but I personally think that the good ending in Final Fantasy III is not only the best ending, but part of me wishes that the series ended here. And while I can't play the music or I'll get copyrighted, the music that plays behind this is so beautiful. So overall, I think that Final Fantasy III does have its flaws, but I personally think that it combines some great elements to make a fun and engaging experience. While the RNG in this game can prevent some players from truly enjoying their time, personally I've always had a blast, and I can definitely say that I think this game is extremely underrated. Well, that's everything. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this video where I explain why I think content warning isn't really that good. It's a banger, trust. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.